Are you happy today? Yes. Why don't we all stand up and as we welcome the Holy Spirit, let's all sing this song. Let's uh, sing this prayer. That Father, fill us with the Holy Spirit. Father, fill us with the Holy Spirit with, by your Spirit. And Father, as we sing a song, Father, as we praise you, Father, we will be filled by the Holy Spirit that you will move in our hearts, that you will move in this place, Father, that all our sicknesses, all our troubles will be away in the name of Jesus. Let's sing this prayer together. Welcome, Holy Spirit. welcome you in this place we welcome you in our hearts church let's open up our hearts our mouth to him give our praises to him for he's worthy Father, we love you, Father, for who you are. Father, I pray that we'll be filled with the Holy Spirit, that we'll be lost in your worship, Father. I pray that let your move be experienced by us, Father, because we know that by your Spirit, all our sicknesses are healed, all our chains are broken, all our troubles are gone away. And Father, that's why we come before your throne. And we ask that you fill us with your spirit. And Holy Spirit reign down.
Hallelujah. Our God is worthy. Our God is able. And He is worthy to receive all our glory, all the honor, and all our praises. Hallelujah. Can we all shout hallelujah? Hallelujah. Amen. As we begin this worship session, I pray that, fa- that, that the Holy Spirit of God will move in our midst yes. and that we'll be lost in His presence. Amen. Hallelujah. So before we go to the next song, this song we're going to do is an action song and I know we all know this song. So I'll ask uh, the youth of this church if they can come forward and even the Sunday school kids if they can come forward. Uh, so we're going, to, we're going to do action song and, and we're going to enjoy this presence of God. Amen. Are you ready to do that? Yes. Can I, can I get a loud praise? Are you ready to do that? Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, fast, fast. Right. 
right and do when I look to my right I see Jesus is taunted when I look to my left I see Jesus is taunted when I look to my front I see Jesus when I look everyone to turn back I see Jesus again when I look to Victorious, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, 
thank you all the kids did you guys enjoy it? did everyone enjoy yes because we are in his presence amen yes the presence of the god is here in our midst yes. hallelujah and as we're going to sing this very last song uh, let's close our eyes and just give ourselves to god because we are praising a name that is above all names amen. a name before which all the kings and queens just bow down everyone just bow down all the things of this world bow down because that's the name of god that's the name of jesus
Jesus made himself nothing and took the very nature of a servant God exalted him to the highest place because Jesus being in very nature God did not consider equality with God something to be taken advantage of therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every other name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue should acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. There is no other name but the name of Jesus. There is no other name that is above the name of Jesus. You can give your sickness a name. You can give your situation a name. You can give your problem a name. You can give your struggle a name. But none of these names can ever, ever rise above the name of Jesus because his name is placed at the highest place by God the Father himself because God the Father exalted him. And him whom the Father exalts, none can bring down. Do you have a sickness that has a name this morning? That sickness has to bow at the name of Jesus. Do you have a situation in your life that has a name? Do you have a relationship that has a name that is disturbing you? Bring that to subjection under the name of Jesus because when you bring it down under the name of Jesus, then that has to bow down before you because Jesus is within you. Jesus name alone can be lifted or elevated to the highest level possible. Hallelujah. It is that name. I want us to lift our hands. I want us to raise our voices this morning. Even as we exalt the name of Jesus. As we magnify the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. The name above every name. The name that is at the highest place. Every other name must bow down. Randa baba raba labori karaba shande rana nana masiboria kachaya ne kolombo shura baba raba rande rade rade be bi samara ba kiara dayale ne me shanda rana laba. Oh hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Because it is at the name of Jesus. The name that God has glorified. And once God has glorified his name, his name can never be brought down to a lower position. Not even second place. 
it is the highest the word used there is God exalted him to the highest place I wanted to say that after me the highest place the highest place the name of Jesus is at the highest place and therefore it should be at the highest place even in our lives if the name of Jesus no other name not even the names of his earthly father or mother no even their names cannot be higher than the name of Jesus because the Bible says God exalted to the highest and so highest means there's nothing higher than that and so even in our lives it is important that we bring Jesus to that level in our lives it is possible that we place him at the fourth level or the fifth level it's possible it's up to us what position we place Jesus in in our lives if he is at the highest place then our lives are dictated and ruled by Jesus every decision every step that we take everything that we do will be as per the diktat of Jesus that is when we can say it is at the highest place but if we do what our mind tells us to do if we follow our understanding then Jesus is not at the highest place you want to be victorious place Jesus at the highest place you want to be successful place Jesus at the highest place you want to be fruitful place Jesus at the highest place and you will see victory you will see fruit you will see success in your life a hundred percent guaranteed it may not be the success that you are looking for it may not be the fruit that you are expecting or the victory that you are seeing or you want to see it'll be what God wants to see in your life he wants to see something in your life allow Jesus name to be at the highest place in your life and you will see you will see hallelujah praise the Lord praise the Lord it's so good to be in the house of the Lord amen and nice to see you all and that means God has been so good to all of us the past week and now this is the first day of the new week and the first day of the rest of our lives as well and the life is very precious and life has come from God so the breath that is within you is not your life it is God's so take care of your life that is given to you to live in this world and glorify the Lord amen praise God the reason I am excited is I don't know what I am going to speak and there is a danger in that you know when you when you start talking without knowing what you're talking there is no end and therefore I had no message today really and I what I have before me is a number of scripture verses that's all and the, let the word of God speak by itself and um, and God is good God is able to minister to you amen, amen. is there anyone who is in need of prayer or in need of God's touch upon your life for any healing or deliverance or any any comfort is there anyone like that here this morning or all of you are well and that is good praise God but I pray that God's presence you are in God's presence and in his presence there is fullness of joy amen what do you have in the presence of God the fullness of God so to begin with let us turn in our Bibles to the book of Romans the letter of Paul to Romans chapter 1 praise God I, I have I have a burden in my heart 
for our people to go deeper in God's word. Because then only we will be able to stand in all situation. Praise God. And you need to know what the Bible speaks. The word of God. More than anything else. You have heard all kinds of sermons and messages. Not only from me, but from the visitors who come and speak to us and minister to us from God's word. But what I am concerned about is the Bible says that we need to be rooted and grounded in the knowledge of God's word. Now these two words reminds us, rooted reminds us of a big tree. Tall and strong, and able to withstand all kinds of weathers and all that. And establish uh, reminds us of a foundation of a building. And rooted and grounded. And the strength and the stability of a house or a building, of any building, any size, depends on its foundation, how deep the foundation goes. And where should we let our foundation be laid. Our faith life's foundation is on the word of God. The deeper we go into God's word, the stronger our faith becomes. Faith comes from hearing. Hearing comes from God's word. Your faith and your life as a witness for Jesus Christ need to be deeply rooted like a strong tree. Why it can withstand storms and rains and all kinds of winds? It's because its roots, invisible to us, and yet it is the root that holds the tree in all situation. That is our life. We need to let our root of our faith go deeper and deeper into God's word. And the word of the Lord will sustain you. The word of the Lord will bless you and help you in, a, in every situation. Okay, let us read Romans chapter 1 verses 14 to 17. There are a lot of scripture verses that we are going to look at. Not, not means I know my time. So I pray that I'll be able to finish before time. So many are happy. <laughs> Praise God. 14 to 17. Chapter 1 of Romans 14 to 17. I am obligated both to Greeks and non-Greeks, both to the wise and the foolish. That is why I am so eager to preach the gospel also to you who are at Rome. And I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes. First for the Jews, then for the Gentiles. For in the gospel, a righteousness from God is revealed. A righteousness that is by faith from first to last. Just as it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. And so what do we have in this passage? 
my whole uh, the other passages everything has to do with this particular portion that we have read this passage shows apostle paul's strong conviction that he owed a great gospel debt to every sinner he owed it and church this is our message we as an evangelical spirit filled church owe it to every person in the city and in the surrounding of lucknow that we take the message to everyone this gathering on sunday morning is a very precious thing because it is appointed this is uh, this gathering together and coming together is not man's idea it was god's idea it was god who assigned this we come together for a purpose we come together to worship the lord and exalt our king of kings and lord of lords together amen and as we worship he is exalted amongst us as he worship he comes in the midst of us the greek language actually say when well, he dwells in the praises of god's people it actually means that where there is worship rising up to god jesus christ comes in our midst with his throne and be seated there and so who is seated in our midst this morning jesus christ himself he dwells upon the praises you are erecting a throne for jesus christ the more you worship him and exalt him and that is how we keep our lord in our midst because of this paul could say what he said in 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 in, in verse 14 what did he say he said i am obligated both to greeks and to non greeks that means every person regardless of one's nationality or religion or or or, or background and his position and his possessions regardless of all that to everyone deserve to hear the gospel message and hear it until that person is convinced that Jesus Christ truly is lord and savior and we need to trust him for our salvation and in case in case if there is someone seated here called in the things of god and in your relationship with the lord jesus christ i plead with you this morning rise up and change your ways you are otherwise enthusiastic about so many other things that you enjoy in this world but the greatest thing that you must enjoy the most is your relationship with the lord jesus christ and what he requires of you on his behalf it is we who must take jesus to those who do not know him yet we are obligated as a person that is that is his language i am obligated that means there is no option there is I, i cannot escape this if i am a child of god if i am a follower of jesus persecution will come you know when he said uh, when, when 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 you read this passage like this it reminds us of another passage in the old testament in second kings chapter 7 
You remember that time Ahaziah was the king of Israel. You remember there is the two kingdom for the entire Jewish nation. Two and a half tribe called Judas. That is David's kingdom. And then nine and a half tribes went to the other part. That is the nation of Israel. And the nation of Israel mostly had all wicked kings and led the nation of Israel. You remember there was a huge famine because the, the nation was surrounded by, besieged by uh, Aramean army. You read it in the seventh chapter. And then you know what happened. They sent a messenger to prophet Elisha and he prophesied that uh, tomorrow you would have plenty of food being sold. Where was he going to get all this food? You know the story? You know the story. You, remi you are reminded of that story. The whole city was surrounded by Aramean army, huge army. There is no way they could get out or come in. And uh, there was famine inside the city, so terrible. And the mothers were cutting out their children and cooking and eating. All such kind of things. That was the severity of that famine. A God rejecting and a wicked king ruling the nation. That's, that's the result. And then you know the story. And he said there are plenty of food being sold tomorrow by this time. And everything will be available. Very, very cheap. Everybody can afford to buy. And one fellow who is king's assistant was standing there. <laughs> Even if uh, heaven opened and uh, pour out his blessing, do you think that uh, such a big population, we are going to get uh, so much food suddenly from where it is going to come? And he doubted. And the prophet said, you will see it, but you will not enjoy it. And that also happened to that fellow. The crowd was so much for the food, he was trampled. And he died. He saw it, but he could not enjoy it. And you know what happened? When the an angel came, they heard some sound. Those who were surrounding the city, the enemy king and his soldiers, they heard some sound. You know, when they heard the sound, it could have been horses coming, running. And they all got frightened. And they all just started running. And as they were running, they, for, they, 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 don't, they didn't even bother to collect their personal items. As they were empty-handed, all their provisions and all their uniforms and all their weapons and everything was left and they took to running. See, sometimes we wonder how God is going to do this. It's a big, huge problem that we are facing. And how God is going to solve this problem is difficult. 
we resign to our fate sometimes. My brothers and sisters, I want you to know that when God wants to do something and show himself more than powerful to meet your need, he has his own way. Sometimes we don't see it, we don't understand even. But trust God. And there were three, four lepers in the valley. And these lepers started talking to each other. What are, what are we going to do? We are starving. We will die. They determined to accept death. They say, if we remain here, we will die of starvation. So there is no use to remain here. But if we go to the enemy's camp, if they seeing us lepers want to get rid of us, they may give us some food and uh, the, the things that we need and uh, drive us out. We will be saved. Otherwise, they will kill us. In both ways, we are prepared. So at last, they decided to accept death. So they went to the camp, enemy camp, and they went absolute silence. They went into the first tent and they saw all the provisions, silver and gold and food in plenty and all kinds of materials, the weapons and everything there. They collected as much as they could and came and put it in one tent. And they went to visit. Two, three, four tents they visited and they collected. They got more than they needed and they suddenly, their conscience began to prick. And they started talking to each other. At least the first thing they said was, we are not doing the right thing. My brothers and sisters, we are living in the most crucial time of the history of the world. We are living at the very last moment of the last day. And if you believe the Bible, then you have to believe that the coming of the Lord is at the door. And how many believers are there in India? How many millions and millions are dying without Jesus? And we have the message we have the only message that brings hope and salvation to the people. In the mistake the churches make, they make too much of a Sunday worship. And uh, there they sing and dance. If the Holy Spirit makes you dance, go ahead and dance. That is no problem. But remember, we have a responsibility. It is time for us to speak to each other and say, we are not doing the right. I thank God for this congregation. But let me tell you, giving is easier. But then going and facing persecution is not all this. But let me warn you, persecution against the true church of Jesus Christ has started in the AD, first century itself. And it continued till today. And now as the end is fast approaching, it is increasing. All the so-called Christian nations are all now heathen nations. 
Look at what is happening in America. Look at what is happening in Britain. Look at what is happening in all so-called, you know, uh, Christian nations like Sweden and all these countries. They are passing legislation giving permission to burn the Bible if you want to. That is what is happening. The Lord is coming and he will come. As he promised. We are not doing that verse 7, the second uh, Kings 7, 9. That is where he said we are not doing well. We must take this message somehow and let the king know. That's what they did. They went, stood at the gate and shouted. The enemy camps all empty. Come. There is plenty of food. And you know what happened. The rest of the story. This is the reason he said. What he said in verse 15. Apostle Paul. What did he say? That is why I am so eager. To preach the gospel also to you. Who are at Rome. Paul preached at Jerusalem and the religious center of the world that time and was mobbed. Acts chapter 21 verse 31. Also chapter 22 verses 22 and 23. Where he stood before the authorities and gave his personal testimony. Look at Acts chapter 2, the 21, Acts chapter 21, verse While they were trying to kill him, kill Paul, news reached the commander of the Roman troops that the whole city of Jerusalem was in an uproar. He at once took some officers and soldiers and ran down to the crowd when the rioters saw the commander and his soldiers, they stopped beating Paul. That is the result of his preaching in Jerusalem. He preached at Athens, the intellectual center, and was mocked at Acts chapter 70, verse 32. Seventeen thirty-two. When they heard about the resurrection of the dead, some of them sneered, and, but others said, we want to hear you again in this subject. At that place, he could not get much success. And it was after this experience, he changed his whole preaching. Since it was intellectual center, he started talking about philosophy and he's talking about intellectual things and the intellectual way he tried to reach them, but he was a failure. And it was after that, since then, by the time he wrote this epistle, he said, when I was among you, I was there as the one who did not know anything else. I determined to declare 
nothing else except Christ crucified. And dear church, the only message, and that has to be simple, Christ crucified. Wherever he went, since then, he preached nothing. I was among you as the one who knew nothing else except Christ crucified. And it is in that message the power of God is manifested to convict the sinners and bring sinners to repentance. Christ crucified. And later he preached in Rome, the political center. And where he would be martyred. According to 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 6. And the next thing I want you to notice is Paul's confidence in the gospel. Verses 16 and 17. In these verses, Paul lists his threefold convictions in the gospel. Here it is. He said, I am debtor to preach. Verse 14. Number two, I am ready to preach it. Verse 15. And thirdly, I am not ashamed to preach it. I am not ashamed of the gospel because what is gospel according to that verse? If your eyes are on that verse, what is the gospel? Somebody say, shout it. He says, the gospel is the power of God. And what is the gospel that Paul preached? Christ Crucified. How could a crucified dead person generate such power? You will find it out as we read the other verses. His confidence in the gospel was that the gospel will never let him down. Nor it never put him to shame. My brothers and sisters, never be afraid and never be ashamed to declare this gospel of Jesus crucified. You should not be afraid because the gospel will never let you down if you boldly declare it. You may be persecuted. Why? Because even they are afraid of a dead savior. They didn't believe that Jesus rose again from the dead and all that. But then why are they afraid? Why are they afraid? For the world to come against all the true Christians. What is the problem? The preaching of Jesus crucified is the gospel. And he, that is not the end of the gospel. He resurrected on the third day. Hallelujah. Because he humbled himself. If you read Philippians chapter 2, that uh, uh, verses 5 to 11, the, the, the stages of his humbling is amazing. From being God, the creator, for him to humble himself and become a man itself is a very huge uh, descent. And then when he came as a man, first, he said, I did not come here to be served, but I came here to serve you. 
then he became a servant and then further he became like a slave as he took the water and washed the feet of whose job was it it was a slave's job in the jewish custom any visitors come it was the master the house of house um, slaves who will wash the feet of the visitors that's what jesus did to the disciples and paul knew that as long as he remained true to the true gospel jesus christ crucified and risen again on the third day and is alive forevermore and this savior he has become the savior of uh, the entire humanity that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life life changing as john newton who wrote that amazing song 200 years ago amazing grace a slave who himself become a slave uh, a ship a captain of a ship carrying slaves to western countries and there is no sin under the sun he has not committed as a result he came to a place where he could not believe that even god could ever save him you didn't believe that i am beyond salvation beyond recovery that's what he believed but one day an amazing thing happened the light of the grace of the risen lord shone above him and in that glorious glow of his glory his life was totally changed even he couldn't believe it that such peace could ever come such assurance would ever come to his heart that this gospel this message of the living christ who died but rose again that became the power of god that anything god cannot do god can do anything hallelujah god did for him then he went he, he did not have to explain it and this explanation came through these songs which has been blessing the church of jesus christ and millions of believers all around the world for the last 200 years amazing grace how sweet the sound which saved a wretch like me i once was lost but now i am found i was blind but now i can see <laughs> hallelujah the gospel message when you preach it under the anointing of the holy spirit you may be arrested you may be put in jail to silence you from preaching it again but the truth that you have declared will never fail you paul was convinced of that i will preach it and the third thing we notice he is convinced what paul was convinced was that the gospel is god's power verse 16 the bible god's word tells us there are two standards by which god's power is measured in the bible 
in the old testament what was it in the old testament it was according to that power by which god brought israel out of egypt that was the measure now if you want to understand it more clearly go home and read in the next couple of days time exodus chapter 14 and 15 and also psalm 78 which in detail explains how the deliverance happened for the people of israel from the land of bondage psalm 78 those of you who are serious about studying write down this reference and go home and read it in the old testament time that was the measure of god's power the people of israel in egypt they became slave and the egyptians became very cruel the king became so cruel they began to torture them persecute them they had no leader they had no king they had no weapon they had no uh, nothing to resist the elderly people were dying the children were dying the sons who were born to the jewish people were thrown into the nile is there any hope for them they had no army they had no people who owned any 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 weapon no possibility and th- through those 10 plagues what was god doing what was the need for 10 god could have delivered them in just in one but why he used all those 10 all those things had to do with the things that they they used to worship god is was showing himself mightier than the mighty pharaoh he is mightier than the gods they worshiped all the gods of egypt our god is mightier than all of them the god is mightier than the nature god is mightier than any other power source of power god is mightier hallelujah and he is your god you are serving him you are trusting him you are exalting him and the more you exalt him the more plans he will make for you and for your deliverance hallelujah and i tell you true people of god will be persecuted persecution is a promise given by god and so when somebody is arrested somebody is, uh, is beaten up please understand what the first century apostles and disciples did what did they did they came together they rejoiced why they rejoice after getting the beatings why should they rejoice they should be looking at all the wounds and the bruises and all the broken bones and everything and uh, feeling pity for themselves no they considered themselves be blessed you know why they rejoice that's what the bible they rejoiced because they were counted worthy to suffer for jesus christ so sanjay your suffering was not too much but nevertheless you were counted worthy one has to be worthy in order to suffer for jesus amen and we lift up our hands and praise the lord hallelujah oh god 
our brothers and sisters are going to be arrested again and beaten again and again but i pray that they will remember this that the disciples rejoiced because they were counted worthy and the so many enemy soldiers became members of the kingdom of god by seeing the courage and the boldness of these poor believers who don't even carry a kitchen knife to stab anybody why are they so afraid poor peter was arrested not only really arrested not only really cuffed the, the, the he was he was uh, what do you call it handcuffed yes but you know with the two chains he was bound and then handed him over to 16 soldiers to guard him with the sword and spear and all the instrument the devil is a coward when it comes to dealing with god's people that's why we need to be strong some beatings or some of us may be killed that is all there but the kingdom of god can never be destroyed it will only grow and i pray that our believers will become bold and courageous hallelujah and what is the measuring unit used in the new testament who can imagine at least god's power is measured in the new testament by what are the greatest event that happened yeah who said that who who said it you said it ha huh? what did you say to go near orange para ha huh? resurrection of jesus that is exactly in the new testament the measuring rule uh, uh, unit for god's power how great god's power is the resurrection of jesus in the resurrection of jesus you will notice the greatest manifestation of god's power it is in that resurrection so ephesians chapter 1 I love this passage. Ooh, hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. Verse 20. I will read uh, this. Uh, <clears throat> That power is like the working of his mighty strength. Whose mighty strength? God. God. god's power working of his mighty strength which he exerted in christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and every title that can be given not only in the present age but also in the one to come and god placed all things under his feet appointed him to be head over everything for the church it is for the church it is for the church it is for you it is for you that christ has been resurrected and exalted and taken higher than any other and given him the greatest power 
Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Let us give a clap offering unto God. God is a, is a mighty power. And that power will be manifested in the jails where God's people go. And that power will be manifested when we are tied and chained. That power will be working in us. What else gives you the courage to face it all? It is his resurrection power. Oh, Rabashi. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, let us all raise our hands. God deserves a mighty praise. Let us thank God. That is for your sake, for the church. It is for the church. Hallelujah. And the, you, know, you know, the Greek word for power is dunamis. From this one word, there are two words. Dynamite, that is for destructive power. And the dynamo is a constructive power. The word destructive. And the gospel of Christ is both. The gospel of Christ is both destructive as well as constructive. It works before everyone. Now how it works. Second Corinthians chapter 2. Turn to that passage. Why we should do everything we can to convey this message to the unsaved. Second Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16. I will read from verse 15. He says, For we are to God the aroma of a Christ among those who are being saved and those who are perishing. To the one we are the smell of death, to the other the fragrance of life. Hallelujah. It works. The same power of the gospel. It is both dynamite and a dynamo. Both destructive and constructive. Those of us who believe, it works. It is a beautiful aroma. Hallelujah. It is, it is this power that is constructing us, making us stronger. I can do all things to work through Christ who strengthens me. You know, we believe that is great, mighty works, Paul is referring. No. Even the things that are humble, small, I am able to do. I can sleep in a king's palace. I can also sleep in a, in a thatched hut outside. I have done it all. I grew up like that only. On a thatched mud hut. I miss that even today. Where we experience God's mighty power. That's where I was filled with the Holy Spirit. Many of our church people were filled with the Holy Spirit in that hut only when we did not have a building. We were two families, and the Sunday services used to be conducted between us two fathers. My house one, and there was another one. But it, it was in my house, that small hut. We used to have this tarry meeting. Most of the believers at that time were filled with the Holy Spirit in that mud hut. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter where you have a place to lay your head. Son of God had no place to lay his head. 
and i look at the passage here what a mighty power the greatest display of divine power is when he raised jesus from the dead that needed a mightiest manifestation of god's power how the devil tried his best to keep jesus body dead inside the grave after trying everything to kill him while he was alive from the birth onward you must understand why this power was needed and even at the time of rapture the devil is going to hinder that rapture that's why the michael will also accompany jesus when he comes for the church hallelujah he will do everything he can till the last moment until he himself will be finished forever forever and he says everything is under his feet under the feet of jesus and if we he is the head and we are the, the church is the body that means everything is under the feet of the church am i right because christ is the head church is the body and everything is under his feet then the church's feet is the feet is the lowest part of our body so that means everything is under the feet of the church that is the truth my brothers and sisters somehow we have been missing this understanding to rise up all the forces will come against us to destroy as long as the devil is free to do it he would do everything he can but the church must rise up knowing that everything is under the feet of jesus that means it is under the feet of the church under us under the church so the church should be spirit filled church should be born again church should be baptized church should be filled with the holy spirit and with the power and anointing of the holy spirit the church should go forward declaring the gospel of Jesus Christ which is Christ crucified and risen from the dead praise god hallelujah and in closing gospel produces righteousness verse 17 chapter 1 verse 17 the simple definition of the word righteousness right clothing right clothing okay the bible teaches us that all sinners are naked before god genesis chapter 3 verse 10 you know every evening there god had a time to visit adam and eve when they were in the garden of eden and this husband and wife team used to wait and look forward our father heavenly father will be coming visiting now the time is come and they look forward the moment they hear heard the 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 sound of god coming they will run daddy but the day they sin as usual he came the first question god ever asked mankind he is adam where are you you can imagine the heart of god broken <laughs> to see his children absent and god called adam where are you and he answered i am here 
behind the tree. We are hiding. Why are you hiding? Because we are afraid. Why are you afraid? We are naked. They were naked all the time. But why? Today you are particularly afraid. They had the covering of the glory of God. But the moment they sinned, that covering is gone. The first thing they noticed was their nakedness. They were afraid. In Hebrews chapter 4, verse 13. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Today, nothing is hidden from God. The, the, the deeds you did in the darkest night, in the darkest room, God has already seen it. Please, why should we fear God? Because we are dealing with a God from whom nothing, absolutely nothing is hidden. Neither can anyone hide anything. It is foolishness for anyone to think. Oh, God has not seen it. How, how could he see Please do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Some sinners realize this and they attempt to make their own suit of spiritual clothes like Adam and Eve did. God looks upon such clothes and see it as what? You remember? Isaiah? Eh? Filthy rags. All our religious clothes that we try to put on and all that. Our own righteousness. We come for God looks at as a filthy rags. So the best thing is when you sin. We know you have hurt God. He is to come just as you are. He is not going to accept any of your own garment that you made with your own righteousness. No. My brothers and sisters, it is this God with whom we have to do. That's what the book of Hebrew says. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give account. It is to him we are accountable. 
You can't hide from everything everyone else. Daddy does not know, mommy does not know, sister does not know, brother does not know, wife does not know, children do not know, church elders do not know, pastor doesn't know, nobody knows what I did to thank God. Even for that they will thank God. You know, in the olden days when uh, the railway, the engine railway, you know, steel, my time is over. Sometimes some believers are very clever to escape buying ticket. Somehow they get inside. And uh, when the TT come, you know, they go to the toilet suddenly. <laughs> and somehow they can. And one fellow, till he reached Kerala, he yes, saved, saved. And he came out and he went to the church the next day. Oh, yes, he also has a testimony. <laughs> Thank God. God helped me to travel all the way from Delhi to Trivandrum without any ticket. We try to find comfort for ourselves. But not, we don't have to do with anyone else. With no kings here on earth, no prime minister, no president, no authorities, we have to do. But we cannot escape standing at the end before the judgment, white throne judgment is another thing. But the judgment seat of Christ for the believers. Can you imagine? But thanks be to God by what Jesus did for us on the cross. Not only he provides forgiveness and cleansing but he also provides new clothes to all repenting sinners. Stand with me as we close. Second Corinthians 6, 7. Hallelujah. In truthful speech and in the power of God with weapons of righteousness in the right hand and in the left through glory and dishonor. Bad report and good report. Genuine yet regarded as impostors. Known yet regarded as unknown. Dying and yet we live on. Beaten and yet not killed. Sorrowful yet always rejoicing. Poor yet making many rich. Having nothing and yet possessing everything. Ephesians 6, 14, talking about the armor of God. Revelation 9, 7 and 8. Let me read that passage for you. Revelation 19, Seven to nine. 
7 and 8 Let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory for the wedding of the lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready fine linen bright and clean was given her to wear fine linen stands for the righteous acts of the saints hallelujah this is god's word this word righteousness may be used to summarize the book of romans in a threefold manner listen to this god is righteous second god demand righteousness third god provides righteousness for us these are the things this is what we need but we don't have to to beg for it he himself will provide us with righteousness and the expression is white linen are given to the saints when we are ready getting ready for the marriage supper of the lamb shall we just lift up our hands my brothers and sisters here is what the church we cannot slumber we cannot take things easy we must take the gospel of christ to every creature everyone possible there will be persecution but in the midst of it all we must trust him to open doors and bringing people to us or taking us to people today the verb the, the people are wide open their heart to the gospel of jesus christ in villages there is a tremendous response tremendous response is happening i i am every thursday i go to Uh, one of our church a pastor emerges a church every year he has some good group of people young people now that this t- this team will have about 35 young people giving them training and i go there to take class somehow bless the people with the knowledge that they need to share the gospel amen Hallelujah. Let us just raise our voices and thank God for the Hallelujah. Amazing amazing grace, amazing grace, amazing grace. Oh the power of God will come upon you. The power and the anointing of God will be given to you as you have a desire to share the gospel. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, I thank you for your people. Thank you Lord for the young and old. We thank you for the senior members. We thank you for the middle-aged. We thank you for the young people. We thank you for the children. and oh lord we thank you that you are able to fill every one with the holy ghost and power in the days to come we give all the honor to you i pray that you bless your people with that anointing that desire to serve you and that the open doors will be available to them to enter in and to share the gospel of jesus christ and to pray with those who want jesus thank you lord use us use us thank you and we give you all the glory and honor and praise worship our god reigns and he reigns forever amen and amen and amen i want to appreciate all of you i know i want to thank very specially for our young people who did uh, such a marvelous things you know we had a youth program here and and what an excellent program it was and uh, and i appreciate our young people and uh, um mahendra and uh, uh pastor sami as the advisor and uh, inspirator and uh, we praise the lord we thank you very much for doing it very good excellently that and and we want to do it more and more because inspire people and motivate them and help them thank you i want